Here's check on stories we're following for you on Robin Hood Radio. At a news conference yesterday, Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont said there are now 415 positive cases of COVID-19 in the state. That was of yesterday. Ten deaths and 54 are hospitalized. 4,500 tests have been conducted statewide, according to Lamont. All schools in the state, by the way, could be reopening on April 20th at the earliest, but that is not a firm date. New York State is ready for the Army Corps to start construction at SUNY Stony Brook, SUNY Westbury, and Westchester County Center and Jacob Javits Center. They will erect federal hospitals within Javits Center for 250-bed fully equipped and fully staffed facilities. The state has leased 600-bed capacity nursing home facility in Brooklyn to convert into temporary hospitals. Calls on the federal government from New York to immediately implement the Defense Production Act and nationalize medical supply chain. It called on the federal government to prioritize sending stimulus funding to individuals, state and local governments, and businesses. Taxpayers must share in the success of the corporations, according to Cuomo. Now, New York State also acquired 70,000 doses of hydroxychlorine quine, 10,000 doses of zithromax, and 750,000 doses of chloroquine to implement drug trials. Those trials will start today. The governor urged the FDA to immediately approve serological testing for COVID-19 antibodies. They announced the Department of Health emergency order for all hospitals to come up with a plan to expand capacity by a minimum of 50% with a goal of 100%. Cuomo also canceled all elective non-critical surgeries effective tomorrow, directing also New York City to come up with a plan for review within 24 hours to address lack of adherence to social distancing protocols. Also, the governor confirmed 4,812 additional virus cases in New York State, bringing the statewide total yesterday to well over $15,000 with new cases in 31 counties. Dutchess County has announced it's closing all Department of Motor Vehicle offices indefinitely in an effort to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Offices in Beacon, Pauling, Millbrook, Wappingers Falls, and Poughkeepsie are closed. The county clerk's office will remain open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Transactions for passport applications and assumed name applications are suspended. More than 60 online transactions remain available, DMV said, according to their registration and license renewal, as well as the ability to plead or pay New York City traffic tickets. In Massachusetts, a story from the Berkshire Eagle. Massachusetts' youngest residents, their parents, and the workforce that cares for them facing a new landscape. Early education providers across the state are officially shuttered under an emergency order. The order of Governor Charlie Baker issued on Wednesday, one of several aimed at stemming the spread of the new coronavirus and promoting social distancing practices, temporarily closes all early education providers across the state, effective from 11.59 on Sunday, at least through April 6, the order allowed for the operation of emergency child care programs with priority access to such programs for vulnerable children and children with families who work to maintain the health, safety, and welfare of all Commonwealth residents. For early education providers and workers, it's been a period of transition, ironing out what emergency models would look like, what steps can be taken to protect the health of staff and families, and how to ensure the system is ready to return to full operations after the closure. The People's Pantry, located at 5 St. James Place, is experiencing a shortage of certain foods. The pantry is in need of breakfast cereal, pasta, not macaroni and cheese, pasta sauce, produce, and reusable shopping bags. A donation box is located outside the People's Pantry door under the tent, at the Taconic Avenue entrance. For more information, peoplespantry.org. And from the Republican American, the weekend in downtown Torrington is when parking spots and streets fill up with cars as they go to shows, galleries, or visit restaurants. But the coronavirus epidemic has changed that. Businesses are taking a hit by the forced closures, and the arts economy is no different. Art galleries are closed, and performances at bars, galleries, and the Warner Theater have been put on hold. The impact has been loss of income for performers and for the institutions themselves that rely on ticket sales. The Warner Theater had to furlough staff in the wake of the number of cancellations. According to Lynn Gellermino, the executive director of the Warner is trying to rebook tours that had to cancel, and they have rescheduled some of the shows. Stephen Burr, executive director of the Northwest Connecticut Arts Council, said all events have been canceled because of the governor's order, but the impact will be hard to determine at this point. And in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, 
the venerable Sharon Classic Road Race has been postponed. It will now be held September 26th. They will be emailing registered participants with options regarding the registration. They thank you for your support in advance and say, we'll see you in September. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlake and Interlakeandin.com and by Salisbury Bank, SalisburyBank.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down over 582 points yesterday, starting off today at 18,000. 591.93. The Nasdaq fell 18.84 to 6860.67, and the S&P 500 will start the day off at 2237.40 after falling 67.52 yesterday. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.